Hey everybody, this is a follow-up video to one I did in October 2017 discussing how light meters work to discuss how light meter modes work. Hey David, what's the difference between matrix, center weighted, and spot metering? So we can also, along with matrix, bundle in um, uh, averaging metering as, as well. And we'll talk about matrix and averaging metering in roughly the same terms. Center weighted's the same for everybody and spot's the same for everybody. So last October I discussed how meters physically work, how they see the world. But using different metering modes allows you to control how your meter sees the world in different ways. Let's say, for instance, that you have matrix or averaging meter going up, metering in use. With averaging meter metering, the camera takes a look at the entire scene and says, okay, given all of the light that's hitting me, the dark areas, the light areas, whatever it is, this is the exposure that gets this whole scene roughly to flat gray. Matrix metering works in about the same way, but it compensates. It says this is really light over here, this is really dark over here, this is really neutral and midtone over here. It breaks the, the scene up into different zones that are fixed by the way the meter is built. And then it uses complex algorithms in the camera to figure out the best meter reading based on the amount of light in each of those zones. Center weighted, what that does is that takes an area in the center of the camera, usually about 12 to 15% of the total frame. And it says between 60 and 75%, depending on the specific camera manufacturer, of the metering data will come from here. And this remaining 88%, 80, 84 to 88% of the frame will comprise the balance, the 25 to 40% of the remaining meter data. So what it does is it takes the center part of the frame and biases the overall exposure to give you a better exposure here uh, to allow you to compensate for things like bright or dark backgrounds or brightness over on one side and darkness over on the other side. But if you have like a person's face right in the middle, you can still get a proper exposure of that person's face by using center weighted. Spot puts 100% of the metering's input in the very center, about 2% usually, of the frame. So uh, what that means, and now in modern DSLRs, especially high-end ones, what you can do is you can link a spot meter to your AF focal point. So what that does is that says, here's AF, an AF focal point over here. This is now the spot meter reading. Here's an AF focal point over here that's gonna be used. This is now the spot meter reading. That's a really good use of spot metering and it's uh, fantastic to have that tool at your disposal as, as a photographer because it means you can focus on something and meter for it and know that regardless of the background, what you're taking a picture of that's in focus will be properly metered. But in general, spot metering takes only the very center of the image and says 100% of the image is meters metering reading is going to be based on this. So if you have a really dark spot in the center, then your whole image is going to be blown out. But if you have a really light spot here, the rest of the image is going to be really dark. So I like spot metering for portraits because if you use a spot meter on a person's face, then you know that's going to be roughly mid-tone, which allows you to have a lot of control over how you edit it in post. And um, it's going to give you, in general, the best results for portraits. So spot metering can also be used if you're out and about and you just want to get an accurate meter reading of the lighting, but you're in a complex situation like city streets or something. You can set it to spot metering, take a meter reading off the sidewalk, which is typically about 18% gray, set your camera settings manually to achieve a good exposure off of that reading from the sidewalk. You can also use your hand or some, a patch of grass. And then as long as you have it in manual set in those manual settings and you're walking around taking photos in roughly the same area, then you'll have an exposure that is roughly well exposed. Shadows will appear dark, highlights will appear light. So that's another powerful use of spot metering. You could also do what's called multi-spot metering. If you wanted to learn how to determine an accurate meter reading manually, this is a skill not many photographers have. What you could do is turn on spot metering and take meter readings from 
five different parts of the image, okay? And then you could say 1 125th at 5, 6, 1 125th at 2, 8, 1 125th at 16. And when you have those five meter readings, you can look at them and say, well, I want this to be properly exposed. I'm going to go with that meter reading. Or I want this area between these to be properly exposed, so I'll go with F4. Or you can average them all together and come up with a good manually achieved average meter for the scene. So that's a really good technique that advanced landscape photographers use, especially 4x5 photographers when they don't, well, most 4x5 cameras don't have a meter in the camera because that allows you to go through and take individual meter readings with like a handheld spot meter, let's say, and then calculate the meter reading manually. Spot metering is the most powerful type of meter metering if you use it well. It's also the most dangerous if you use it incorrectly. Center weighted metering modes are really good general shooting modes for just walk around shooting.